This is Math 142, and this is a part one lecture for 7.1. And we're going to deal with uh, with some trig identities. And what we're going to do is some um, basically some manipulation with the with the trig functions. We're going to do some um, rewriting them from one form to another. So let's get some stuff up here that that we know. So one thing is the reciprocal identities. And the reciprocal identities are basically that you know cosecant is the same as one over sine. And, and that actually came out of our definition of cosecant. Once we figured out what sine was, we said flip it over, take its reciprocal, and you get cosecant. And I'm gonna write the, the rest of them because we've seen them before. And um, as you know, the, the, the flips of all these are the same as well. So I could also write things like uh, this. So another uh, thing that I have is the Pythagorean identities. Um, cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is 1. And, you know, if you think about terms of the unit circle, where our width is, x is the angle, is cosine, and our height is sine, right? x is cosine, y is sine. You can see that's just Pythagorean theorem. This side squared plus this side squared is 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. So this is true. If you can remember this, you can derive the other two Pythagorean identities. So for example, I could divide everything here by cosine squared. I could take this identity and just divide both sides by cosine squared of x. And then if something divided by itself is one, and then if I have sine squared over cosine squared, sine squared over cosine squared, that's just that's just tangent. You know, I know that that tangent is y over x or sine over cosine. So if they're both squared, tangent would be squared. So that would be the same as tangent squared. And one over cosine squared, well, one over cosine is secant, so that would be secant squared. And then um, I can get a third Pythagorean identity just by doing the same thing, but instead of dividing by cosine squared, divide by sine squared. Cosine divided by sine, well, that must be this one flipped over, which is cotangent. So cotangent squared of x plus sine divided by sine, sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. And then 1 divided by sine is cosecant, so this would be cosecant squared. So you can see what I'm starting to get are some relationships here. Let me get a couple more on these. So for example, if I had sine of negative x or cosine of negative x or tangent of negative x, what would they be the same as? So sine of negative x. So let's just look, for example, at uh, sine of, of negative 45 degrees. So negative 45 degrees is here. And notice that's negative root 2 over 2 because it's that, it's that height. Notice that if I were just to go sine of 45 degrees, I would get the same magnitude of height but in the opposite direction, right? Just sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. So these magnitudes are the same, but the sine S-I-G-N is, is different, the parity. So... If I were to negate that, then these would be the same. So notice that sine of negative 45 degrees is equal to negative sine of 45 degrees, right? Because it's about up down direction. So that's cool. Let's, let's think about cosine then. How about if I went cosine of negative 45 degrees? Cosine of negative 45 degrees is that, is root two over two. But notice if I go cosine of 45 degrees is that, that width is the same. They're equal to each other. And that's true in any direction, right? If I were to go negative 120 degrees, I'd end up here, but positive 120 degrees, I'd end up here. They have the same width value. So that means that um, cosine of negative 45 is just the same as cosine of 45 because it's about width, it's not about height. So that gives us two of these. Sine of negative x is the same as negative sine of x. 
and cosine of negative x is this just the same as cosine of x. And now, since uh, tangent is sine over cosine, that'd be a negative divided by a positive, so it's just negative tangent of x. All right, uh, one more little piece I want to get up here. These kind of these transformations. So um, sine and cosine, they look a lot alike. but one's a shifted version of the other. So if I have this sine, this is the sine value, this is sine right here. If I wanted to shift it back to match here, I'd have to shift it back pi over two. And to shift it to the left, I'm gonna to have to add pi over two. And then they become the same. So if I just say uh, x plus pi over two, it's equal to cosine x, that shift. And to get cosine to be sine, I have to shift it in the other direction. So cosine of x minus pi over 2 would give me sine. Now, there's some man manipulations I could do here. I could uh, take out a negative and use these rules. But what I'm, what I'm going to get is basically, I could also say, and this is true for any, any of these, um, sine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to cosine of x. That's the same for cosine too. Um, cosine of pi over two minus x is the same as sine of x. And um, tangent, cotangent have the same relationship um, as the secant and cosecant. Oops, cosecant. So notice that um, this blah pi over two minus x is equal to that. That's the that's tangent cotangent works that way. Secant cosecant works that way as well. So all these relationships are relationships to know, and uh, what the rest of the lecture is going to be is we're going to practice practice using them. And um, in this part one, what we're going to do is we're just going to use these to simplify some things. Uh, in part two, we'll do some what's called verification, proving that that one thing is the same as another is an identity. So here's an example. If I had um, plus tangent of t times sine of t. Now in these problems, um, we're we're simplifying or we're just trying to uh, to see how we can clean it up a little bit. This might be a complicated version of something else. Um, there's no like kind of sequential step-to-step -step way of doing this. This is this is play. You're you're just um, trying to manipulate it and see how you can rewrite it. So there's not like necessarily a first step, but I will try and give you some rules of thumb. And, and one of them is, and again, this doesn't always work, but um, turn things into sine and cosine. Now, again, you don't necessarily always want to do that, but it's a pretty good technique. And notice that we have like cosecant in, term, um, cosecant in terms of sine, secant in terms of cosine, tangent and cotangent. So let's uh, let's do that. This is already cosine. Tangent we know is sine over cosine. Sorry, I meant to say t. And this is um, sine t. And that's like over you know over one. So another thing, kind of rule of thumb, do the arithmetic. In other words, I have some things that are multiplied here. I have some things that are added to do that, uh, added together. Do it. So I have this uh, cosine of t, and notice if I multiply these together, sine times sine is sine squared, and that's over cosine. So I've done that arithmetic. I've done that multiplication, and I can keep going. How about I do this addition as well? So in order to add these things together, I'll need a common denominator. This has a denominator of cosine. So this needs a denominator of cosine as well. So I'll multiply this one by this version of one. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And that's over cos t plus sine squared over uh, cosine of t. And notice then that um, since they have a common denominator, I can add the numerator. So then I have cosine squared plus sine squared, 
and that feels good, over cosine of t. Notice cosine squared plus sine squared. Anytime I have a, a square in here, it's going to push me towards these Pythagorean identities. It's not always necessarily going to be one, but it's, it's going to make me think of it. But I notice that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this is the same as 1 over cosine t. Oh, and that's just the same as a secant. I notice that this simplifies to secant. And notice the way that I got there. I turn everything into terms of sine and cosine. Again, you don't always have to do that, but it but it helps. It could help in most cases. And then I just did the arithmetic and saw where it led me. And then I started to see things that I recognized. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So here's another example. And uh, I notice everything's already in terms of sine and cosine. We're just simplifying this. You know, the directions would be simplify. So like I said, everything's in terms of sine and cosine. So let me do the arithmetic. I'm going to add these fractions together. So that means I would need a common denominator. So to get that common denominator, I'd have to multiply this side by uh, this fraction by 1 plus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta. And I have to multiply this one by cosine over cosine. Um, here I, I'm going to distribute that that sine into there, so I'd have um, sine times 1, so sine theta, plus sine squared, plus cosine squared, and that whole thing would be over, um, I won't multiply this out just quite yet unless I need to, 1 plus sine theta times cosine theta. I notice that sine squared plus cosine squared is just 1. So great. So I'm going to condense that then uh, to a 1. So I have sine theta plus 1 over 1 plus sine theta times cosine of theta. Sine plus 1 and 1 plus sine, those are the same thing. So I can actually divide those out. That divides out to a 1. This will leave me 1 over cosine theta. And I notice that 1 over cosine is secant. <laughs> so this one just happens to become secant too. So this is uh, secant theta. This simplifies to that. They're equivalent. So um, in most cases, except cases where I'd be dividing by 0 here, um, if I plug in like 30 degrees and I evaluate this, it's going to be the same answer as if I just plug in 30 degrees to that to evaluate it. That's what it means for them to be equivalent. Um, and so simplifying it makes it simpler. And notice what we did. We just did the arithmetic and then looked for pieces that we could substitute in. All right, so here's uh, three more that I'll just, we'll just do. So sine times cotangent. Well, let's see, this is already in terms of sine. Cotangent. Cotangent is 1 over tangent. I know it's also cosine over sine. So I'll rewrite this as cosine over sine. I'll think about that as over 1. And now I'll do the arithmetic. I have these fractions that are multiplied together. And I notice that sine divided by sine is 1. So this is the same as cosine. So let's do another one. Um, cosine times secant. Cosine is cosine. Uh, what is secant? Secant's 1 over cosine. Do the arithmetic. Boop. That equals 1. Great. And one more example. Cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. So there's a couple of, uh, of ways I could go about doing this one. Um, I, might, I might turn them both turn them both into sine in terms of sine and cosine. Combine them up and go from there. Um, I could do that. I could do some substitution here. I know that cosecant is cotangent squared plus 1. So I could take that and substitute it in for cosecant. Not necessarily the most efficient way, but it'll get me there. Oops, I wrote x and I meant theta. And notice now I have these things added and subtracted. Cotangent squared minus cotangent squared is 0, so that's equal to 1.
Yeah, so I could get there that way. I would get there to 1 if I turned them both into sine and cosine. It would be a little longer road. Um, another thing I could do is I could uh, I could just think about, like, that's basically what this says. Notice if I um, subtract cotangent from both sides, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared is equal to 1. So I could do that substitution too. So let's go ahead and try and simplify this one. Um, cosine theta times secant theta minus cosine theta. So um, you might see right away that secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So you might distribute this right away and just say that you know that that's going to be a 1. If you don't, turn everything into terms of sine and cosine. That's, that's fine. Both ways are fine to go. Secant is 1 over cosine of theta, and this is cosine of theta. So as we do the arithmetic, when I distribute this into this, this would be the cosines cancel, cosine over cosine is 1, uh, minus cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So then I have 1 minus cosine squared. And so there's the 1, there's the cosine squared, pushes me towards some sort of Pythagorean identity. And um, you, so you might see right away, if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, sine squared is equal to that. So we know this is going to end up being sine squared. Now, if you didn't see that right away, you could do something like, well, I know that uh, 1 is cosine squared plus sine squared. So I can replace this with a cosine squared plus a sine squared. So notice that this 1 is this, and then it's minus cosine squared. And now I have cosine squared minus cosine squared, which just leaves me sine squared. Cosine theta times secant theta minus cosine theta. So um, you might see right away that secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So you might distribute this right away and just say that you know that that's going to be a 1. If you don't, turn everything into terms of sine and cosine. That's, that's fine. Both ways are fine to go. Secant is 1 over cosine of theta, and this is cosine of theta. So as we do the arithmetic, when I distribute this into this, this would be the cosines cancel, cosine over cosine is 1, uh, minus cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So then I have 1 minus cosine squared. And so there's the 1, there's the cosine squared, pushes me towards some sort of Pythagorean identity. And um, you, so you might see right away, if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, sine squared is equal to that. So we know this is going to end up being sine squared. Now, if you didn't see that right away, you could do something like, well, I know that uh, 1 is cosine squared plus sine squared. So I can replace this with a cosine squared plus a sine squared. So notice that this 1 is this, and then it's minus cosine squared. And now I have cosine squared minus cosine squared, which just leaves me sine squared. 1 plus cosine over cosine. Now, this one, there's a little technique here. Everything's already in terms of cosine. And when it says do the arithmetic, it doesn't feel like there's much arithmetic to do. But um, notice that I have a single denominator here. You know, I have this 1 plus cosine just divided by the cosine. So the 1 is being divided by the cosine, and so is the cosine. So when I just have a single piece in that denominator, this is just fraction skill, I can think of it as dividing the pieces. Uh, 1 divided by cosine theta plus cosine theta divided by cosine theta. You know, it's like when you have a common denominator, you get that common denominator, then you can add the numerators. We're just kind of doing that backwards in a sense. And what that gives me is 1 over cosine, that's secant. And cosine over cosine is 1. So this is equivalent to that. This problem is another technique problem that I'm going to show you. So notice I have a cosine squared that pushes me towards the Pythagorean theorem. And I also see a sine cubed and a sine. So things are already in terms of sine cosine. Do the arithmetic. It's kind of, there's nothing like straight ahead to see uh, necessarily to do, but there is a sine here and a sine here. So what I could do is factor a sine out of this. So if I factor out a sine, sine cubed 
if I factor out a sine, that's going to leave me a sine squared. Cosine squared sine, I factored that sine out, so that leaves me a cosine squared. And then I have that great Pythagorean identity. That's just a 1. So this is equal to sine x. So I might add kind of a little, a little tip here. Um, can you factor? And sometimes when you can factor, it won't necessarily make the problem simpler. Like I said at the start, this is really, this is technique. This is, uh, this is play. There's, there's not just the, necessarily a flow to these problems where you can just follow steps. This problem's a lot like the, the last problem that we did. Notice these are both divided by cosecant. Cosecant divided by cosecant is 1. 1 divided by cosecant, well, let's see, 1 over, cosecant is 1 over sine. So sine must be 1 over cosine, secant, secant. So this is 1 minus sine squared x. And now I have this 1, I have this sine squared. That's really making me think Pythagorean. And looky here, this, if, I, if I subtracted this sine squared from both sides, Cosine squared would equal 1 minus sine squared. So this is equal to cosine squared. 1 plus tangent over secant. Well, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's think of this as 1 over secant of beta plus tangent beta over secant beta. 1 over secant, that's cosine. Tangent over secant. Let's let's turn these into uh, let's take this and, and turn these into things that are in terms of sine and, and cosine. So um, tangent <clears throat> is sine over cosine. Secant is one over cosine. And notice if I have a fraction divided by a fraction, that's the same as the numerator multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator because we're dividing by that bottom those cosines divide out so that leaves me sine so this would be cosine of beta plus sine of beta now notice it's just that there's they're not squared so it's not equal to one give these give these problems a try um, you know, the, the homework set. Post any questions that you have in the forums. Send me, message me with any questions that you have. This is really just practice. You're really playing around with these relationships, being able to recognize them and being able to rewrite things in terms of them.